right. Uh, let's start uh, the um, third session, I believe, of OP244. And uh, uh, one thing I want to mention, um, as I will add again everybody's name to the to the uh, office team, where you're going to get the announcement and all the good stuff. If you urgently want to post something in there, you can click on OP244 Office Help, and that will take you directly to the office, where we can all post whatever we want, and everybody can help help everybody. So you click on that one, you open the Windows app, it will open it automatically. Mine is opening in the other window. It's opening it here. So as you see, it's going to open, and it's going to directly bring you to the, to the thing. So you can start a new conversation over here as you see people are doing, okay? So I didn't actually, did I see that? I didn't see that, did I? Anyway, so yeah, so please go through that and uh, you'll see all the postings and everything coming up over there. Um, yeah, I haven't even seen this yet. Um, I'll take a look at it and I'll see what's going on. Uh, any questions before we start? No questions? All right. So as usual, as, as I said, for the first few times that I'm teaching the class, I'm going to actually start up the Visual Studio and uh, build the project. And then after that, um, um, we'll go through the rest of the things. Your workshop zeros should be done by now, very well done by now. Um, when you... Uh, ask me, uh, when you add me as a collaborator to Workshop Zero, um, when I accept the collaboration request, uh, that's the last stage of your workshop, uh, I'll double check to see if you have created your, your repository properly. If you see there is an issue or issue at the top of, uh, uh, I'll show it to you. So uh, let me just um, create this. So uh, Visual Studio. Uh, create empty project uh, with no starting files. I click on next. Uh, select the directory. So the directory is going to be ZAA in our case, and it's 303 January 17th. So I'll select the folder and I'll go 03 January 17th. That's our session. I'm going to create, and it's going to create an empty session for me. Okay, so I was talking about, I was talking about um, uh, issues uh, for, for invitation. Uh, anybody over here is volunteering so I can demonstrate? Anybody who sent a request? Um, why is it like this? Oh my goodness, let me, sh like, I don't think you're going to be able to see anything. Um, let me pause this. This is awful. Just, just drop it. So this is you? Yeah. Okay, so we'll click on a repository and request is here. So I'm going to view the invitation. That uh, tells me if you want to accept. Of course, I will accept. And it's the beautiful lady over here that's requested. And I'll take a look at the work uh, workshop. If I see anything, now this is perfectly done, so I have no issues with this. But I'm going to just open an issue just in case, okay? So, so, so what I do over here, as you see, um, uh, in here they're, they're called issues. I can come over here um, and I'm going to create a new issue. So I'm going to say over here, for example, your read, please ignore this, you know that is, right? Your read me file does not follow the requirements or does not include the requirements okay and then I'm gonna say over here please follow the instructions exactly okay and then I'm gonna click on submit a new issue where she is going to see that issue over there and simply can mark it as completed. So I know it's fixed. So you see, so when you are actually, when she is going to go to the, 
uh, to the repository, she's going to see there is one issue over there. Okay? And that issue is uh, supposed to get fixed. Thank you very much. Are we okay with this? So, and remember about all those because sometimes I just randomly go to your repositories and see what you're doing and how you are doing. And if I see you are doing something over there, even without you telling me, like asking for help, you tell me, uh, like I go over there and I see you are doing something wrong in your workshop, whatever. And I'll say, I was looking at your code and this is supposed to be like that. And I'll explain it to you. You will see there's an issue over there. So and that issue tracking is a very normal thing in um, application development in the world. Uh, essentially, that's how everything works, okay? All right, so that's that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about pull requests and stuff like that, so forget about all those things and actions and things. We don't need to know about that. That's in your free time, you can always go and study and see how Git works and how GitHub works and all the good stuff. But we're just doing a, a, a it's kind of a startup for us. Okay, so that's that. Well, thank you very much for uh, uh, volunteering on this. And now I'm going to go to the, uh, the repository. Um, there is an NJJ section over here added. Uh, don't worry about that. That's uh, another section that I'm helping for now until um, uh, the professor is well enough to come back and teach. So if you see there's stuff over there that is kind of out of sync with yours, just ignore it. The A and Z are the ones that I'm, that I'm uh, um, is my responsibility. So those are the ones that you're looking at, mostly. You can look at the other one too, like this in the recording and stuff, but yeah. So that's that. Uh, okay, so what else we need to do? We need to actually start. So um, what I, what I'm, what I'm going to do is essentially going through uh, uh, I'll, I'll show it to you. Hello. I especially made the door like that so people come late. You can actually ee, so you can actually. <laughs> we, everybody knows you're late. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just open this. I'm going to start with types, overloading, references, things like that. This is supposed to be done in week two. I guarantee that our lecture is going to leak into the lab because I know 70% of you have problem with pointers from IPC 144, and don't tell me we don't. Okay, you do. Okay, we're going to go through. So I will start the pointers as if it's IPC 144. I'll explain to you what the pointers are from scratch. So when we go to Dynamic memory allocation will not going to be like, what the, okay? So be okay with that. Um, so again, any questions before, the, before we start from the last thingy? Suggestions? Objections? Are we good? All right. So... Uh, I'm going to create the first file over here. So we are going to uh, include <clears throat> IO stream uh, visible up there, right? Hopefully. Are we okay back at? at the lady sitting at a vat. You see that properly? You good with that? Okay. All right. So I, I'll go include IO stream, and obviously uh, I'm going to go using namespace std and int main return zero. So uh, uh, do we remember what was a namespace? When I say namespace, what is a namespace good for? It, oh, remember the rules of the thing? If you're not in a mood, you don't want to answer, just whatever, you just say pass and I go to the next victim. Okay? And we're going to continue like that. Are we good? 
So is it a pass? Name space? Remember? It's like a class. It's like a class, but it's not really like a class. So uh, it's a library of some code. It's not a library at all. But uh, um, namespace is where we. Uh, it is like we like. I don't know. Pass. pass. <laughs> Do you remember what namespaces were? Pass. Pass. Okay. So when you hear three passes, you can come to rescue. Remember that. When you hear three passes, you can say, I'm going to put them out of their misery. Tell me. I know. So just what's a quickly mentioned from, and by the way, it's going to be on your quiz the next day you're coming in. So uh, remember that's from the last thingy. Uh, namespaces are where we create our names so we don't have conflict. And when we create a structure, we talked about a, a teacher. And I said a teacher from the education point of view has specific attributes, which reminds me, what is an attribute? Question, I don't know. <laughs> Plus. Plus. Okay, an attribute is a variable. It's a variable. An attribute is a variable that you put it inside a structure. We said that whenever we are creating a structure from now on, we're not going to call the uh, members of a structure, uh, the, the, uh, the variables we have inside the structure, we're not going to call them variables anymore. To indicate what specifically they are, we call them in C++, we call them member variables. So variables inside the structure, we call them member variables, variables, uh, or we call them attribute. An attribute is an object-oriented terminology, which means if you say attribute to any programmer who does object-oriented programming in Python, in Smalltalk, in uh, C++, in Objective-C, they know you are talking about a member variable, okay? And the other one is called a member function. A member function, unlike C language, we said we can actually put functions inside the structure. Therefore, we call those things member functions or method. Method is the object-oriented terminology for a member function that C++ refers to. Again, any object-oriented programmer will know what a method is. So I was talking about namespaces. Unlike C, C language, when you create a structure, because this is an object-oriented language, your structure becomes a type. Remember that? You don't need to write struct name of the structure to recreate it, to create an instance out of it. When I create struct teacher and put information inside of it. If I want to create an array of teacher like C, I don't need to mention struct teacher A5. All I need to say is teacher A5, which means I have five teachers, okay? Because every single structure that you create becomes a type, these types, these type names need to be unique. You cannot have two ints, right? It doesn't make sense. That's why we said we have namespaces. Namespaces are to create types inside their abstraction. Which reminds me, what is an abs what is abstraction? Uh, like sort out all the things. Sort out all the things that you want and ignore the things that, it, that doesn't apply to your application. Therefore, from education point of view, a teacher is the subject he's teaching is the number of courses he's teaching, is the room that he is in, is the number of students he has. But from HR point of view, a teacher is an employee that receives salary and uh, has certain degree of education, has years of experience. So a teacher from HR point of view, although the name of the structure is still teacher, has different stuff because of its abstraction where in education part, ad administration part, education part, it's a different story. Therefore, the programmers who are working in the HR department create their teachers in an HR namespace. So they write namespace, HR, they write everything in there. And people who are in administration write namespace ADM, then they create the teacher in there. Now, because these two namespaces are different, when it's compiled, one is the ADM scope resolution teacher. The other one is 
HR scope resolution feature. Therefore, the names are different. Therefore, no collision. Therefore, having a namespace. Why do I say using namespace STD? Because when namespaces got introduced in C++, C++ says, so what the heck we're going to do with all the structures and types and stuff that we created for our language by standard? They said, easy, put it in the STD namespace. So everything that comes with C++ is in namespace STD. And because I don't keep what I don't want to keep typing STD scope resolution C out, STD scope resolution C in, I make my life easy by saying using namespace STD. And therefore, what do I do? I don't have to keep saying STD scope resolution. Anything that the language, the compiler doesn't recognize to tell you that it's not recognized. First, it checks the STD namespace. If it cannot find it there, then it tells you it's not recognized. Got it? We're good? All right. So, that's why I have the using namespace thinking. Now, we want to know about types. Now, we go back to IPC 144. You were my last victim, right? So, it's your turn, my friend. So, do you remember, we have two major categories of types. Like, if you look at the C language, there are two universal types that you have, two different ones only. And then in each one, we have several types. Do you remember what those two were? Maybe they didn't teach you that way, but I just want to see if you can guess. Like. When you look at, let's put it this way, when you look at the types, many of them have similarities and the other half have their own similarities. How can you group them in two different one, types? Um, maybe like integers and, uh -huh, and? and characters, characters. No, character is an integer. Ah, is character is an integer? Yeah. Character is nothing. Okay, so that's folks. So first, thank you very much. It was a very good guess about integers. What do you think with the rest there? No, no, array is not a type. Array is a collection of many types together. No, user, no, no, user defined types are not, so I'm talking about primitive types. Primitive type is a type that comes with a language. I'm not talking about a teacher. I know, teacher is a new type. Th those things we're not talking about. But that teacher is made up of some prime, pr pr uh, primitive type. Do you remember? You, you mean the four type? No, 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 no. Integer, pro. Oh, <laughs> integer and what? Pro. Okay. Pro. Integer, float, double, what else? And, uh, char. char. Okay, now if you want to categorize these two into two separate things, how you do that? These four. Uh, Some of them are integers and the rest of them are? Okay, floating points. So the types in a language is divided into two major categories. Integrals, which are numbers that they don't have partials and real numbers, double float, that have partials. That's the two major categories. Done. We do not have anything else in any language. Are we okay with that? Say yes. yes. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we good? Okay. So two major types in C language, integrals, real ones. Now, tell me some integers, integrals. Types that are integers, they don't have partials. One. No, that's a value. That's, that's a literal a value. value. I'm talking about types. Wow, one laptop was enough for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, you know, <laughs> those people with tools, I don't want to be in keyboards. And, okay, go ahead. Pass. Pass. Int. Integers, integer types. Uh, int. Int. Boolean. That's not C. Oh. Um, short. Short, it's not shorts, it's short, okay? <laughs> so, int, short. Jar. Care. Long, long. Long, long, wow, fantastic. So, so, these are the types that we have, and we refer to them as integers in C language. But I'm going to talk C++ now, okay? So, these are the types that we have. What are the types? We have, I'm going to start from the smallest one and keep going up, okay? Character, short, int. Long and long, long, 
and long, 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 and long. No, I'm joking. No, those <laughs> just two longs will do. Okay, so we have character short, int, long, and long, long. Okay, so. Why do we call a character an integer? Because there is no character in C language. We don't have such a thing. You are telling to your graphic card, I want the shape of, the shape that is corresponding to 65 to get printed. And that's going to be? Capital A. Capital A. No, capital. That's 92. Wow. You know, ask you her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first geek. We are in the same team. Nice. I, 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 I like everybody to be geeks. Geeks are beautiful things, you know? Believe me, because those are the ones who end up being billionaires. Just think about it. All right. Okay, so I'm not joking. That's real. Okay, so. <laughs> Better. Okay, so. Next. So. Uh, Character. So, what about, so if I say over here character ch is equal to 65, I can say c out 65, and I can say, uh, uh, let's put some space, and I can say ch, and I go new line, and, and when I uh, run this beautiful program of mine, obviously the result is going to be, three years later, a 65 and an a. They are both 65s. One is looked at as an integer. The other one is the, the shape of the ASCII code 65. So if that's why C, we never should think of characters as characters. If I say CH plus, blah, 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 CH plus equal plus equal 2, and I'll go again CH, print CH, what's going to get printed at line 14? C. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? So, 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 how big the number in CH can get? 250, 255, so it goes from 0 to 256. So essentially, a character can show, can represent 256 different things. Why? Because a character has 8 bits. 2 to power 8 is 256, right? So, what if I go negative and positive? How many fingers? Did I talk about this? Did I say how many fingers in this class? OK, how many fingers? Okay. 10. 10 relates to 256. OK? Now, if I start from 0, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So when you say it holds 10 different things, it means 10 doesn't exist in it. It's from 0 to 9. Are we OK with this? Now, if I want to divide this to negatives and positive, what do I do? I have to decide which one's going to be 0. I'll make this one 0. So if this is 0, it's going to be minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, correct? Therefore, with 10 fingers, I still show 10 numbers. But negatives are 1 more than positives. That's why it's the exact same thing in the characters. In characters, if you want to show negative numbers, minus 128 is the smallest integer, plus 127 is the biggest one. Because the number is even, they had to put the zero, in, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's how it's done. And the same thing with short. If you go with short, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's 2 to power 8, that's the number, 32,000 something, yada, 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 yada. And then you divide it by 2, 16,000 negative, plus 1, 16,000 thousand positive and zero belongs to the positive side. Are we okay with this? And the same thing with the other. So character 256, short around 32, int goes around a billion, long and int, depending on your platform, they interchange. They can be both four or they can be both eight. One can be four, the other one can be eight, doesn't matter. Eight bytes and long, long is always eight bytes. Okay? Eight bytes, it means the number you can put in it can be two to power 64, whatever it is. We good? Be okay? Fantastic. We have another type of integer that you did not mention. And I'm not giving you any fault in that because you didn't know. We'll go to it soon. Uh, I'm not talking about the Boolean, by the way. <laughs> I'm talking about something else. And in C language, in C++, in C++, in C++, 
they wanted to put people in ease who said C is complicated. Um, it, why is it complicated? Because in C language, who was the last person? You were the last person. I, who was that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's you. All right. So, in, so I should go to the other one. You are the one. Okay. What is? <laughs> I love his face. He's like. Ugh. All right. So, what's true in C? True. Yeah. Um, any number that is not zero. Could not be better than yeah. that. C language says anything that is not zero is true, correct? But if I have a Boolean operator, like three greater than one, what's the result of that? That would be one. That would be one. So if the language tells you what's true or false based on a Boolean operator, the result is always one. But when it's testing to see if something is true or false, anything but zero is true. So what is false? Zero. Thank you. Zero is false. That's it. That was too difficult for people to understand. So they said, the heck with it. We're going to give you a new type called Boolean. Okay. Boolean comes from Boolean algebra, okay, which essentially means the, 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 the mathematics of zero and one. So how many fingers I have in my hand? 10, therefore our, the base of our numbering system is 10, which means I'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 becomes essentially one more than 9, and now it's two digits, correct? Now, if I had eight fingers in each hand, what would have been? It will be 0, 1, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then one zero. And that one zero is one 16 and a zero, where the other one 10 is one 10 and a zero, right? Now imagine if you have only one finger in each hand. Then you had zero, right? One, you never had two, then becomes 10. What is 10? 10 is one two and a zero. What is one one? One is one two and a one, so it becomes three. So if you have, and after that you have one zero zero, which becomes one four zero. Okay, so that's how it works, Boolean algebra. And because of this, they call the type bool. Behind the scene, they're actually having an integer or a character or something sitting over there. It's not a really a bit. When you say bool, it, the size is actually, I don't know what, how they implement it. I can tell you later on. But it's either an integer or a character that they are putting over there and you, they force it to be one. Why? How? This is like this. Is like this. So, so I don't know where to put bool. Bool sh should be either here or it could be here, depending on what. Let me actually tell you what is it. That tells you size of is not SDR len. Size of tells you what is the size of that thing in memory. It's OP345, but I, to make sure I give you correct information, I'm just, it's not OP345, it's a C thing. One, so it's a character, okay? So it's implemented as a character, so I can put it over here with comfort, okay? Or before or after, right? So it's one byte, all right? So bool is essentially one byte that is forced to be either zero or one, which means I can do something like this, I can say, I can say bool uh, OK, and I can do this. That means what? Yeah, so remember, initialization, which brings us to something else that I'm going to explain in a second. Just a second. See, I want to see when I'm explaining it. When did I explain it? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my cheat sheet to see w which stage I should go through it. Oh, so it's here. I made a... Yeah, so it's not this early, but it doesn't matter. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to it soon. So, 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 so like if I do it like this, it essentially means false. It defaults it to whatever it is. So I could actually write this over here like this. You know that, right? It didn't make any difference. It's the same thing as equal, okay? Okay, so let's put it 65, and I explain something interesting to you later on, which is very important. 
We'll come to it soon. But anyways, so uh, if false, I'm going to say. So if I say over here, if, if OK, then I'm going to say over here, see out, this will not happen. All right? Are we OK with that if statement, people? All right. Now if I say over here, OK is true. So we know actually false is zero and true is one. So if you print true, don't think true is going to get printed. One is going to get printed. C++ is C. It doesn't understand what is true or false. They just did that for us so we are happy because this is true, right? I see the true word over there. Yay! Okay, that's the reason. So if I do it like this, I can now go okay if okay now see out this will happen. Correct? Are we okay with this? Now I can do even something like this. OK is equal to, right? And I'll go C out. OK. So after I do all these good stuff, we'll see that at the end, what is printed? One, it doesn't matter what you put in, o, in a Boolean variable. If it's not zero, it makes it one. We good? Yes. Oh, shoot. Anybody has double A batteries by any chance? Two of them? I went downstairs, there was nothing. So if this thing blinks and ends, which means we will not have a recording for this class. If anybody has two double A batteries, let me know. Ha! Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's pause. So what was I talking about? Anyway, remember? Oh, yeah, the Boolean thingy. All right? Are we okay with this, everyone? Down to this point? Okay? All right. So, all right. So we have the types. Uh, we have the integer types, and we know what the Boolean is. So, uh, the, 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 the floats, so these are integrals. And these are uh, real numbers, which are essentially, which are essentially what, what they are. The smallest one is float, and then after that, and then after that we have double, and then after that we have long double, right? Double, right? Are we okay? So these are the things that we have. Float goes. Uh, uh, one point, like a number point, whatever, multiplied to 10 to power, I think, 27. That's the biggest it can get. And uh, I'm not quite 100% sure. Go Google it or look at the notes. Double goes up to 10 to, two, 10 to power 328, I believe. And long double goes 10 to power 1,000 something, okay? So um, the problem with float double and long double is that it's like you want to uh, we we'll know what is the distance from here to sun in centimeters. It doesn't make sense. Nobody cares about, like, even kilometers is like, that's why they use light years, right? <laughs> so so, so when, the, when the number gets so big, the small parts are always falling away, which means if you write an accounting program using float, the person who you, are, who you are writing accounting program will lose or gain some money at the end of the program without you knowing. Because when you create a float number, let's say price, and you say equals to 235, it could be 234.999999 on 235.000001 without you knowing. That's why. By default, anything you do floats, nobody use. Okay? Unless like, you want to use it something for GPA, because GPA is 3.5, it's 3.4, and like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 doesn't do anything. It doesn't really gain up and down. And you don't like, do calculations so much, so 3.5 becomes 3.6. So you can use it for that. But for money and regular calculations, we always use double, and we want. That's why it's, it's actually called double precision. So precision of double is double the precision of float. 
okay? And long double is double the precision of double, okay? So we good with that? We're okay? And these are real numbers, and that's that. So I'll call this one a-types.cpp. By the way, uh, apart from the Boolean, everything is C. It has nothing to do with C++. Yes? We'll come to it soon. That's that when we get to the point. He's absolutely right. We have another set of types in integers that they are pointer types. Pointer types are a type of their own. We'll come to it soon. Okay? They are integers too. But they, they don't behave like integers. They're a little freaky. And we're going to find out why. But the fact is to just know them as integers. Don't give them extra credit. Don't think they do magic. They don't. It's just an integer with a freaky thing to do. Okay? The difference between an integer, not an integer, an unsigned integer. What is an unsigned integer? What is, an, what is the difference between signed and unsigned integer? Well, signed is that it can be negative or positive, and unsigned it can only be only positive. Pos only positive. So, so, so it, I could put unsigned in front of not these, not the double ones, but I could put unsigned in front of all these. Unsigned care, unsigned, not unsigned, boolean, sorry. Unsigned care, unsigned short, unsigned int, unsigned long, unsigned long, long. I can do that, okay? There's no problem with that. But pointers, by default, are keeping indexes of bytes in memory because your memory is literally an array of characters, right? Big array of characters. So they start from index zero and they go up to the money in your pocket, how much RAM you put in your computer, right? So that's the how big they can get. And pointer's job is to hold that index, the index of the character in memory. And because of that, it is unsigned. But that's not the freaky thing about it. The only difference between an integer and a pointer, unsigned integer, and a pointer is that if you add one to an unsigned integer, one will be added to it. So if you have unsigned integer four, you do that plus one, it becomes five. Well, when you create a pointer and you do plus one, one will not be maybe added to it, but it may be two, it may be four, it may be eight, it will be 16, it may be 255, depending on what the pointer is. We come to it and I'll explain it when I'm teaching the pointers. Because it came up, uh, I had to explain it, okay? So that's the only difference between a pointer. And now it doesn't make sense. Give me two seconds. Uh, when it, not two seconds, a few minutes. When I get to the pointers, we'll find out what it is. <sighs> Let me just do something. I'm going to pause I Zoom. As our friend mentioned over here, we have custom types. Why we call this custom types? Because unlike C++ C language, when you create a structure in C++, they become types. Okay? That's why we call them custom types. So, essentially, if I create a if I create a structure of type car, and I'm going to say the car has speed and the car has a model. Okay? When I do something like this, in my program, I do not need to say struct car anymore. All I need to say, I can say car, not that car, car, parking, 200. It means a parking is an area of cars that can hold 200 cars in it. So car becomes a custom type. Therefore the, need of, therefore, the need of namespaces. So when you create a module for car, we did it last time, you put, you know what to do with the header file and put thingies, right? Okay, so you do that, and that's that. So that's, it's called custom types, okay? Or uh, custom types fall into the category of what we call compound types, types that are built out of other types. Okay, compound types are types that are built out of other types. For example, an array is not an array. We don't have anything like It's a compound type, and you will see soon that array is not just built of series. Of, like if you say integer A50, 
you don't have 50 integers. There are more to it. That's why that array thingy becomes a compound thing, and it has its own behavior. It has whole system and stuff. Are we good down to this point? Are we okay one? <laughs> are we okay one? You should say no, that's a two. Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Three. We're done. Okay. Now, so because you mentioned it, I'm going to call it custom types. Now, another feature of C++ language, like uh, just, just uh, remember that we did that graph thingy in, in your workshop? And graph had this function called line. Remember that? So if I want to have a function that draws a line, uh, essentially what I, how I can write the function would be this. And I'm going to introduce you a new type in C language that falls in the category of integers. It's called size t. Size underline t. Size underline t essentially means a type for size. That's un essentially, I'm too lazy to write unsigned int. I'm writing size t. <laughs> okay? Size t means only positive numbers. So just remember that. Whenever you see size t, it's an unsigned integer. That's in C++. So, <clears throat> so I can write something like this, correct? That actually prints a line for me. And now I get that line. I put a prototype over here. And I can draw a line with it. So I can go line with, I don't know, pluses and uh, 50 of them. So essentially, it draws a line with 50 pluses, and that's it, right? Very simple. Wait a minute. Sometimes I just want to draw a line. And I want it to be the size of the thing. So uh, the size of the thing, let's say it's 80 characters, and I don't want to go more than that, so I'll make it 79. So what I want to do, I just want to draw a line, a full line, OK? For that, what I'm going to say over here, void full line. And I need only to show what to print it with, right? <clears throat> so I can actually write that void full line of mine. full line of mine, and I can put over here character fill, and in here I can say draw a line for me with fill 79 characters, right? So now I can actually say over here full line, whoa, go up, 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 <clears throat> full line, and I can draw it with, uh, say, the assignment operator. Oh, 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 not like that. This intelligence thingy kills me. OK, so <clears throat> there you go. All right, good. So now if I run the program, the first one rises. And the second one goes up. Are we OK with this? Any problem with this? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, he was taking a picture. I wanted to see the OK. <laughs> it is all recorded, and it's going to be online, OK? So you don't need, but, but it's OK. You can take a picture, record whenever you want. You don't need my permission. I just make a joke out of it. All right, are we good down to this point? Now, C++, we said, is polymorphic. What the devil that meant? Oh, Didn't even let me get close. Oh, I forgot. I have that. <laughs> Polymorphism, remember what it was? Uh-huh. Not display. Any action that can be done in many different ways, it's a polymorphic thing, right? C++ is a polymorphic language, which means the same action can be done in many different ways. Isn't full line is just a line that is driven, right? The only difference between a full line and line is that you don't need to mention what its size is, correct? Right? So. We can do this. And that is the difference between C and C++. In C language, the name of a function is the signature of the function. Identifies what a function is, therefore it has to be unique. 
you cannot have two functions with the same name. In C++, it's the name and the, of the function and the, at, and the arguments it receives that identifies what the function is. Therefore, I can have two line functions with the same name. One doesn't need size, the other one needs size, the one that has size, so it calls the proper one automatically. Obviously, I'm reusing the code over there, but it doesn't have to. Yes? Then it's not polymorphic anymore. So, see, mm, you, we could wait for it second half of the semester, okay? <clears throat> he was, he was actually saying it's an, an absolutely beautiful thing over here. What if we, the function somehow have the same name and the same arguments, not types, arguments, but they are behaving differently? That cannot be done with this, because this is this <coughs> example that I give you is a paradox. Because in an object-oriented world, this is the hello in the midnight that I was talking about. I have a function that doesn't belong to anything, right? So it's a wrong thing to do. But I just wanted to show that you could overload a function. Overloading a function is one of the types of polymorphism which essentially means you can have functions with the same name and different argument types. If I even make another line and I only put an integer instead of a character, the compiler is going to get confused because character is an integer, right? So it doesn't know what to do with it. It's kind of a, you know, a curveball. It doesn't like it says, wait a minute, so is this a character you're passing me or is the length? So probably it's not going to compile. Unless it's very different, like maybe an unsigned, I don't know. Okay, but what I'm saying is that <clears throat> you have to make them really different, and this is called overloading. We have four different types of polymorphism. First one comes from C language, which is essentially casting. So when you write, when you have an integer and you set an integer to the double, it is set. So that equal sign is working between an integer and a double, right? You can put an integer and an integer, still the same equal sign. You can put an integer and a character, still the same assignment, right? Or plus, you can have plus an integer and a double, plus double and a double. So what does the compiler do when you have an integer and a double? It casts the, the integer to a double, adds them up, and returns a double, right? <clears throat> And so that's kind of a part, so you have the same operation happening in many different ways, right? It is kind of polymorphism. But when you look at it, it's just casting. Same thing with overloading. Overloading looks like polymorphism. So you say line. So when you are calling the line, it looks like you're calling the same function. But what happens behind the scene is that the compiler says, unlike C language, when you name the function, I'm going to call the function with the name and the types of the arguments. So line number three is line char size t. Line number four is line char. Now the names become different, right? So it's not really polymorphism. It's faking it. I call these type of things fake polymorphism. Okay? The real polymorphism is when you have two functions that are identical in everything and they act differently based on their Nature. That's after midterm. Okay, we're going to get to that after. This, so fake polymorphism, I'm going to go to at the end, very last session of the semester, we have a session of types of polymorphism, and you will see these, these two, because just casting and overloading is that. But we don't consider it as fake, it's still polymorphism, right? It's still line doing it with different things. And you can do the exact same thing with more than one feature. So I can have another thing over here called line with nothing in it. And I say if somebody actually wants to have, wants to draw a line just like that, <clears throat> draw a line with, with uh, just uh, a sing single line. So, and if I run it like this, so if I create a line, if I can create a line, this is what's going to be. Okay? Are we okay with this? So now I have three different functions that comes to this. Okay? 
That's called overloading, which means you can have functions with different types that act based on what they're, the types that are passing. Obviously, if I could write something like a line that receives a double, that, then that would have been a different story. It still would be uh, 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 an overload. In here, the logics are all the same. That's why I'm calling one function in another. In real life examples, sometimes you cannot reuse the other logic because everything is completely different inside because of the arguments. Are we okay down to this point? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is overloading. <clears throat> when this is the case where you have the same function being recalled over and over, which means the line, as I told you, this is rarely the case. This, what I showed you over here, is rarely the case. Usually, the, 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 the content inside are very much different that you cannot just reuse the other one. You have to do many other things. You have to overload the function and create a new one. But if when the logic's all the same, identical, and it's just variable values that are changed, C++ give you a mechanism called default value for arguments, which means instead of creating, for example, something like this, you would say, hey, compiler, if fill is not provided, use dash instead. Therefore, this will not be needed. So what happens is that if I just put nothing in here, compiler says, OK, I have nothing in here. But I have a line that has a default value. So if I provide the default value for fill, I'm not going to need the fill anymore. Therefore, no arguments needed. Therefore, I can call this one. Are we OK with this? OK. And you can do the exact same thing to the other one. So in here, I can say, <clears throat> instead of bringing this, I can bring this one over here. You cannot leave it just at that. Many people in final assessment last semester may lost mark because of that. You cannot have a default value for the first argument and leave the second one nothing, because that's not how the syntax of C works. You can only reduce from the left, right? I cannot ignore the first one and provide the second one. How can I do that? It doesn't work, right? So <clears throat> because of that fact, you have to put it the other one, too. So now if I put over here is equal to 79, now I do not need to have any overloads for this because the default value for the arguments is doing the same thing, essentially, for me. Overloading is possible. So if you see you cannot reuse, overload. By all means. But if you see the nature of overloading is just the default value for the arguments, then use the default arguments. It's easier. Less coding, right? Now it works the same way. So for the first one, when it runs, obviously plus and 50 is passed. So when it comes over here, fill will be plus and len will be 50. So the two default values are not used. And it's going to just run it and, and go through it. But when it goes to the line with the equal sign passed to it, when the function is called, ah, it went too much. Let me just uh, go over here, run to cursor. So I was here. So as I was saying, when it actually comes over here, now you will see len gets the default value 79 because it's not provided, but fill is assignment operator because uh, it's, it's not used. And if I go to the third one, you will see because nothing is provided, fill will have the default value dash or minus, and len will have the 79. Are we okay with this? Yes. Yes, of course. It means it means your the minimum amount of it means you have only have two overloads, two arguments and one. Yes, you can do that. No. So, so you're talking about, you're to, you say, can we provide only length? If you do that, then the third one's going to give you an error. Because it at least needs one argument to make this thing happen. And it doesn't have any values to pass to it. Uh, 
So, so you're saying, so in O, oh, so in here, put over here, put over here 40? Yes. No. Oh, so let's do, so let's do 65. I want it to be length of 65, correct? Uh, I'm not getting what you're saying. Uh, Give me the line number. No, no, there's a line number in front of it. Like line number seven, line number five, line number 12. Line number. Which line number are you talking? <laughs> These are the line numbers. Which one? Oh, line number three. Okay, my apologies. Sorry, I thought you were talking about the third. Okay, line number three, go ahead. So you want to put something over here? Yeah. If put a default value, then it becomes what it was before, right? So you're saying, you're saying, you want to put a default value for this, like, oh, I know. And then we put 65 over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, characters are not integer. The ca characters are integers. You put 65, it thinks, it rightfully thinks you want to print the thing with an A. Because this is essentially the ASCII code of the assignment operator. And this is the ASCII code of A. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Again, nothing happens by magic, people. Everything's very logical. Remember, no programming language has any type of intelligence. It's absolutely dumb. So what you wish it would have done as a human and I would under, it, it would understand what your requirements are, it will never happen. Always it blindly follow instructions. Okay? I can actually tell to myself, with your eyes closed, walk 10 meters towards the wall. Logically, I would stop when my foot hits the wall. Well, because I said that at the wall, I'm going to hit myself five times to the wall if I'm a computer because every single time my eyes is closed and I'm not seeing the end. I'm going to keep hitting my head to the wall. It's not a human being. It's not, it doesn't have any intelligence. It doesn't predict things. It doesn't do anything. Okay? It's a programming language. It's not chat GPT. It's, okay? It's a programming language. This chat GPT is written with C++. Got it? Okay. When I say chat GPT, everybody says, <laughs> my best friend. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's why I blocked everything for, 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 for your tests. Um, anyways, we'll see what happens. Hopefully some, not, nothing's going to go wrong, but we'll see. Anyways. So that's that. So this is the fault value. Uh, let me put this. If I put over here, <clears throat> I'm going to do something in here. I'm going to say void line unsigned int len. Okay? Got it? And in here, I'm going to say if that's the case, I want line with dashes and len happen, okay? Now if I say over here line 65, what's going to happen? It's going to give me an error. It's going to tell me, hey, this is, this is more than one instance of order of the function line matches the argument list. Which one should I use, right? Now I'm going to do this. What happened now? That's a literal value of an unsigned integer. <clears throat> when you put, you know that, right, your IPC form 44, when you put u at the end, it means it's an unsigned integer, not any integer. So it doesn't do casting. Or you could have casted this thing to an unsigned integer. So you give a way to the computer to identify what's going on. Then what you want will be accomplished. OK? So that's that. So now if I do it like this, for the fourth one, because now I made it very different, there is no casting involved. If there is casting, and there are two ways of, if there is casting, and there are two ways of casting happening over there, then compiler gets confused. 
But when you provide the casting for the compiler, the compiler will not get confused, and it's going to happen this way. So that's overloading. And let me just run it, make sure it runs and doesn't do any boo-boo. There we go. So now, so as you see, I could not put default argument for line 4. It had to be a new implementation. Got it? Now you know where we need it, where we need Overloading where we need default arguments. See overloading and default argument values dot cpp. Oh, thank you. One percent for no. I'm joking. Again, one those one percents only come when you say something extremely juicy. OK. All right. It's 11.02. I have approximately 33 minutes that I can actually uh, do the review on pointers. And I will do it, OK? So I'll give you five minutes break to do whatever uh, ooh, that you want to do. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, something I have to mention, the lab that you have, the lab that you're coming, will not have a break. OK, let me just pause this. I'm going to really rush through pointers, because you have some bases on it. You know what it is. So what I want you to do is to kind of Erase your minds from what you know from pointers and assume that this is the first time you're being introduced to it. Look at it with that perspective, then we'll go through it, okay? Okay, is that a deal? Okay, and I'll try to be very quick because I want to talk about something else too at the end. And then you're going to be in sync with the other class, otherwise you're going to be a little behind. I don't want that. I want you to guys be in sync. So. This is one of the few times that I use slides because it, it, this thing needs to really be visual. And this is the memory inside your computer. So essentially it starts from at the beginning with index 0, and it goes 1, 2, 3, and it keeps going to the size of whatever your memory is. This has a flaw. I made a boo-boo five years ago, and every time I say, I'm going to fix it, and I never do. So I'm going to tell you what the problem with this, what I've, what I've driven over here, what I have drawn over here actually uh, is. You see, so this is the address 108, correct? So address 108 is for this block, correct? Let me use the mouse so people in the recording can see too. So <clears throat> this is address 108, correct? Right? This is address 120, correct? So where is address 124? Because I put 25 over here. So the cell for 24 is missing. Forgive me. That's my boo-boo, OK? Assume it's there, and when I'm going to pass through it, just forget about the things that come down here, OK? I'm going to fix it one day. Are we OK? <laughs> or even better. The slides are up there. I'm going to put the slides for you. If you fix it and give it back to me, I really appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So the PowerPoint presentations are in your notes for you to see. So this is your, uh, uh, your array. It's, it's, an, it's <clears throat> an, indexed, an indexed array of characters, which essentially are bytes. We know each character is a byte, 8 bits from 0 to 255, right? We know that. So, and the index of this array, we call that address, right? So when you're saying address of a byte in memory, you're essentially talking about its index. Are we good about that? Are we okay? Good, good. So we're on the track. So we're essentially, when you create a variable inside your program in var, somewhere in your executable, four digits will be occupied and it will be labeled with the name that you have. And therefore, 
when you set that one. What is the address of this vowel right now? 108, right? It's 108, correct? It's not the four things that it has. Where it begins is the address, right? And when in your program you create a double, same thing happens. In your executable somewhere, you're going to have eight bytes of memory back to whether it's flagged like dvar, that's a double variable. Are we okay with this? And when you set the value to something, it essentially converts that to binary and overwrites the whole four bytes with that value. And the same thing with the double. It co converts it to a binary representation of a double and convert covers the whole eight bytes <clears throat> by the value. Are we okay with this? All right. So let's go back to what we were before. <clears throat> now, if I want to, for some crazy reason, I want to deal with where these things are, I need to have another type because I want to hold that index and that index is a special thing. I create a new type for it and I will call it a pointer. So pointer PTR is a type in which it can hold that index of the values inside the things, right? And I can set it to any number. So as you see, PTR is at the top over there, and I put 102 in it. So essentially, by putting 102 inside the PTR, I mean point to the address 102. Are we okay with this? Because that's the job of the pointers. I'm calling it pointer. It's its name. It's supposed to point, right? But that's not, there is nothing in there, right? I, the correct value that I want to set over here is 108, not 102. The problem is that you can never know where the variables are put in your executable. And each time you run it, it's somewhere else in memory. So the addresses are not always the same. So you cannot hard code the value. You need a way to extract something. That's why we create an operator, we call it address of, like size of. Size of is an operator. It's one of those operators that is, is not a single digit, but it actually is, looks like a function. But size of is actually an operator. It extracts the size of the, the, the type. In here, I'm saying PTR is equal to address of var, and therefore address of var will extracts the var wherever it is and puts the address in there, right? And then we're going to create another operator for it. We call it target of. So I can say target of PTR is equal to 2345. Therefore, I'm telling to the compiler, hey, I'm not dealing with PTR. I want you to see where the target of PTR is and put the value in there. And therefore, the compiler will go to the target of PTR and it will put 2345 over there. Are we okay with this? So if I print the variable, what's going to get printed will be 2345, correct? And if I print target of PTR, the result will be the same. But if I print the PTR itself, what's going to get printed is the address of where var is currently in the memory. Are we okay with this? Yes. Which one? This one? This one is not random at all. It is the address in which it is currently. So each t it remains constant while your program is running. When your program is finished and gone, you execute it again, it's going to be a new one because now your program is somewhere else in memory. In that sense, it is random. But through a, if I do that print 50 times, it's always going to be 108. It's not going to sit different places. While your program runs, it's a constant thing. It's always there. But when your program finishes and you run the program again, now operating system is putting your operating program here. Now your var is 952. Right? Okay. And what I'm telling you, all of it is absolute truth. Okay? There is no... Okay? So, but there is a problem with the design that we have in here. Now, let's say I want to hold the address of the double. So I'm going to say PTR is address of dvar, correct? Therefore, 132 is going to go to the pointer, correct? And then I'm going to say target of PTR is 2345 point whatever, correct? Which means it has to set the 8 bytes to the value. Are we okay? How can it do that? 
It's impossible. How does it know what is sitting at the target? How does it know over here it's supposed to be four whites and it's supposed to be eight bytes here? It doesn't know. It doesn't know what, when you receive an, when you have an envelope with an address on it, do you know what is it? Address of a house, address of a government building, address of a school, you don't know. It's a number in a street, correct? So you don't know what's at the target. So we have to kind of modify our design instead of just doing it like this. So we know this is impossible. The design what we have done sucks. So what we're going to do, we're going to fix it by actually adding what this pointer is going to point to. So I'm going to say integer pointer PTR. Right? I'm going to say integer pointer PTR. Now it knows the PTR is pointing to an integer, therefore when I say address of var and I say target of, it knows it's supposed to overwrite 4 because the target is an integer. And if I, and everything goes perfectly like that. And if I say double pointer DPTR, which is someplace else in memory, when it actually points to it, when I say target of, it knows the target is a double pointer, double variable, therefore everything's going to go fine. Are we okay with this? Okay, so what I'm saying is the fact that if I create something like integer a or double, what's the matter? So double uh, x, and I'm saying we'll get 23.45. Okay, I put this thing over here, correct? Then I'm going to say double pointer p is set to address of address of uh, x, right? And now I'm going to say target of target of p is equal to 12312.34. Okay? So if I see out here C out, what do I do? C out uh, x, and that's going to show me what x is. Right? And if I go C out, I don't want to print anything hexadecimal, so I'm going to actually cast it over here. I'm going to say unsigned. To see an answer. By the way, casting in C++, the parentheses go around the variable instead of, instead of a type. You can do it like C version too. It, they both work. So I can say over here, unsigned P to print it. So, so that's where the pointer is. So that's going to be the value of P. That's where X is sitting. And now if I do C out X again, Obviously, the third one, the, the th so the first value will be 23.45. The second one will be where x is in memory. And the third one will be the value of x after setting using the address, correct? And if I run the program, you will see that it works perfectly as we mentioned. Are we okay with this? And to your uh, thing that you were saying, random thingy, I'm going to do this. It is not random. It is always the same during the execution, but each time it's different. So now it's 264, and if I run it again, the next time it's another thing. During the execution, it remains the same. Yes. Why you? Oh, okay. I'm, if, do you know how to read hexadecimal? Okay, I just translated it into English, <laughs> so you can actually see what it is. When, when it's unsigned, you actually see the unsigned value. Ah. Are we okay with this? All right. So let's go back to our presentation. So that's essentially yes.
There is no format required. It's polymorphic. It knows what you're. So the operator is a polymorphic operator. It knows what you are passing to it. And so this is a co constant character array. It prints it as a string. This operator, after prints, returns C out. That C out picks up the unsigned printer. It knows it's unsigned because it's polymorphic. It prints an outside, unsigned, returns the C out. That C out prints a new line, and you're done. Yes? No, then you're going to write a virus because you're going out of the back door trying to see what, the question. What was the question? Okay? It's like you're going to a hotel and you're asking to give you a room. And I say, you've got to go to room 345. I say, can I just randomly pick my own? No, you can't. You're a thief. You can't do that. The operating system, which is the hotel, hotel manager, is responsible to give you the, ve the, the, the places that are vacant. Otherwise, you cannot, right? Do it. Okay. I know your intentions. But <laughs> can I destroy the computer? <laughs> All right. So, 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 so that's that. So, so if I go back here, so what happens, and that happens, we know that, but, but, but the pointer in C++ and C language is represented by an asterisk, right? So when you write it, you should never say asterisk. You should call it what it is. So essentially, integer pointer PTR is written as integer asterisk PTR. But when asterisk comes after type, you never call it asterisk or star. You call integer pointer PTR double pointer PTR. And those asterisks belong to the type. The address of is represented by ampersand, which means you never say ampersand unless it means and, or even for that you say and, you never say ampersand. So in here, instead of target of, you say ampersand DVR, but you call it address of DVR. And sadly, for target of, they use asterisk again. So if the asterisk comes before a variable name, it's called target of, not asterisk. And therefore, target of DPTR over here will be target of, I'm not going to even call it asterisk anymore. It's target of DPTR. And that's it. So target and pointer are both represented by asterisk. If that asterisk comes after a type, it means type pointer. Like that. Like this. Like this. But this was set for IPC 144, so remove that struct. This is an IPC 144 lecture. Okay? So it's employee pointer EPTR. And if asterisk comes in front of a variable as a unary operator, like plus 5, minus 2, not A, then it means target of. So A is set to target of P. Target of T is equal to X. A is B set to B multiplied by target of C. And E is equal to target of M multiplied by C multiplied by C. You never, ever call an asterisk an asterisk. You name it what you mean, therefore you learn it. Got it? So... How the devil my freaking program worked. The reason was pointers.h. I said define target of to asterisk, <laughs> define asterisk. <laughs> so, so as I told you, those hashtags, it does it before compilation, right? So I'm saying before compiling, remove all the target ofs and put an asterisk. Remove all the address of and put ampersand and remove all the target of put that. So, ta-da. Okay? So if you name it properly, or if you don't like it, just include that always and add to it. But, but that's not a good include. It only works for this, by the way. Okay? So just, no, no. It works everywhere. It works everywhere. But you have to make it a proper header file with safeguards. And 
a defined is not just a defined professional. You have to check if it's, if it's already defined, you undefined it. It's a difficult thing to do. So that compiler thing that I have written, it's going to be very big. If I write it properly, everybody would have been confused. But a defined like this makes sense. Are we OK with pointers now? All right. And, and what the devil is an array? So when I'm saying array, what do I mean by an array? When I actually name something an array, an array, when you actually create an array, your integer is one integer. When you create, and you create a pointer, it points to it. We know all that. We did it two seconds ago, right? But when you are calling an array, an array is a series of, of variables inside the executable. So when I say integer AR5, we think that's what's going to get created. That's not really the case. What happens behind the scene is, and obviously when I say AR3, you're going to say index 3 and you put it in there, right? But what happens behind the scene is really this. What you have is a constant integer pointer AR created separately that points to the beginning of those series of stuff. And when you are saying, I want to if, so uh, literally, if you put target of in, in front of a name of an array and you set a value, you're going to set the first element because the first element is the first one. So the index essentially means from the address AR, go zero addresses further, which means the beginning, right? So essentially, if I say AR2, I am saying add two to the address AR and put it over there. So if I do something like this, it's going to be 444, four, four, but I could do it like this. I can say target of AR plus 2. And that's why it's a weird thing. It's not an integer. Because if you add 2 to an integer, it will be 110, correct? But when you add 2 to a pointer, it looks to see what is the size of the target. It adds that many. So when I say 2, I mean 2 integers, that's eight bytes. If it was a double, it would be two doubles, that's 16 bytes. If it was an employee with size of 900, that would be 1,800 bytes. So adding one to a pointer adds the size of the target, not one. And that's why there are different types. And that's how the pointers are. And that's why. You simply pass, when you are passing an array to a function, you leave the index empty. So what you are actually saying, create an array without a body, that's just a pointer. So you can just replace it with a pointer. Ta-da! Okay? So that's what arrays are. Okay? Just be mindful of that. And before we go, in four minutes, I don't know if I can cover it. I'll do my best. So uh, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save this as uh, fake pointers. <laughs> no exclamation mark. I don't think it works. It's okay. So that's that. So anybody knows what's my name? Fardad. 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 Okay. So my name is Fardad. It's very difficult. Like the, the person who do, did my password is this idiot who didn't know English. He wrote F-A-R-D-A-D. -D. It's supposed to be F-A-R-D-A-U-D, -D, so it becomes Fardad. Okay? But now I'm for that. <laughs> it means your dad is for. Okay? And when I'm speaking in English, seriously, who, what's your name? My name is for that because I'm speaking in English accent, and therefore it's difficult to suddenly switch halfway through to another. Anyways, so what I want to ask you to please Call me Freddy from now on. Is that okay? <laughs> Freddy. Okay. So if you call, if you ask Freddy to teach C++, who's going to teach me C++? No. Fardad is going to teach C++. Correct? If, I, if you tell to Fardad to let's go have coffee, who's going to come and coffee with you? Freddy. Do I have two people? One person. Fardad and Freddy, right? The same people. So what is... This Freddy called an English language. Freddy is what of a far that? Nickname. We talk Shakespearean English, that becomes alias, right? So Freddy becomes an alias for far that, right? We can do that in C++. Okay? In C++, we can actually do that. What I can do over here, I can say, 
We don't need the pointer thingy. I can say over here integer a is 25. Now I can say integer reference. So in C++, reference, just because it wasn't confusing enough, now you can put an ampersand after a type, <laughs> OK? So if the ampersand comes after the type, that means reference. That means alias. So integer reference R. If I do that, I'll get an error. Can I say Freddy is an alias? Freddy is a nickname. Nickname of whom? You have to say Freddy is nickname of Bardak, right? My name is, I don't know, William, call me Bob. What kind of a nickname is I don't know. But anyways, that's the way English works. So, so that's what it is. So that's the alias, right? In here, if I do it like this, it's going to give me an error. You cannot just create an alias. You have to say what this alias is for. And now I'm going to say A. And now life is beautiful. So you cannot create an alias just like so. It's not like a pointer. It's not a variable of its own. Nothing new ex ex exists in here. I don't have two integers. I have one integer with two names. After line six, A and R are literally indistinguishable from each other. You cannot say which one is the real one. You set R. So now if I do like this, if I go C out R, and then I say R is set to 234, and I say C out A, doesn't make any difference, people. And I go again, C out R. They are all the same. Absolutely no difference. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Yes. Hmm? Why you're not always wearing just one shirt? Why you're only get wearing one color of shirt and no other thing? Why you're but come on, there could be five different ways to do things. And I'll show you some side effects of this one. It's beautiful. Can I go there and do it? Okay. I don't have time. It's 35. Guys, so I want you to remember where I was. I just introduced you what the pointers are. You have to, to remind me when we are coming to lab to tell you, what do I tell you? You have to remind me to tell you how functions are called. That's, again, an IPC thing that I, did they tell you how a function is called? Literally, behind the scene? No? So you have to tell me how function is called and continue the reference. Please remember this. How function is called, continue the reference. Yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can call me Freddy. You can call me Jack. You can call me Jane if you want to. I don't care. So they are all my aliases. They are all the same people. OK? Are we OK? Are we OK? All right. Have a good day.